Today we're going to do the 2022 Chateau 27R. Come on! Today we are in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada at Fraser Way RV Centre and we're going to show you the Chateau. This is a different one than we've done before so we'll refer you back to the uh, construction video for more of those kinds of details. But today this is what we get to do. So as always the links are in the description to the timestamps and the currency converter and our RV research tool. And of course if we're providing you with any value feel free to buy us a coffee. Thanks to Trisha and John, you guys are so great. You always support us and we love that about you. Let's get started checking out the 27R. Now it is on the Ford E450 Super Duty chassis and I got the info for you here. So that is a 7.3 liter Triton V8 with uh, 350 horsepower and 468 foot-pounds of torque. Hope that helps you out. And uh, let's talk about tires here too. These are the Dynapro HTs from Hankook and they are an LT225 slash 75R16. They are a steel wheel with a uh, hubcap over top. I don't think it's aluminum. Um, but that's the, you know, the part that makes it look nicer, right? Okay, coming back, you get these massive mirrors, because remember when you're driving down the road, the slide is pushed in, so you can see well as you're backing up or changing lanes, that kind of thing. You do get the handy dandy um, step up, which we're gonna love, you know that. And then this particular one has, I'm just gonna put my phone down has a, a full wall slide so it's got quite a bit going on in there and we'll check that out when we get inside uh, it is on the Schwintech system which is a lot for a full wall slide but they do have it on the three rails which we have seen them doing so I'm assuming that is uh, a fix for any previous problems that they may have had and I would be interested to hear if it's doing the trick. Is it fixing things? Are people having any more Schwintech problems uh, now that they've put the three rail slides in? Let us know if you know. It does have some bulb here. It does have the flap. And if you look way up, it does have the uh, cover over top of the slide. So I love that. Uh, let's see what else we can find. Now, because this is a full wall slide, any of the compartments are way under there. <laughs> So I'm going to climb in. You don't have to, I'll do it for you <laughs> to show you what's in these compartments because this is low. This is super low. So yeah, just take that into consideration. You do get a uh, generator. This is the Onan 4000 watt um, Cummins. And I'm thinking that that'll be a gas generator and will be plumbed into the tank system. Ow. <laughs> okay, in here is a nice compartment and these are lit and they'll be really super easy to wash out too. So I do like that. Uh, I also like that they open down and I don't have to worry about attaching them to anything. Gotta get my knees off the ground. Oops, it's the other side. Dang it. Of course it is. <laughs> Okay, here, and I mean, these are not um, the deepest doors this way, but they are quite nice this way. Again, it's that nice, easy to wash inside, and it's lit. And then, I think I can climb out. I can. Ooh. Okay, so it still goes under the slide, but now it's at the higher part of the slide, so it's a little easier to access. Here's your 30 amp, uh, electric and this will be your cable yeah alrighty and here is another opening but this one's more to the inside of the storage and it joins with this one here 
which is a big door and gives you lots of space. And again, they open down and they're easy to manage. This is also lit. So this is that same easy to clean out. There's lots of space in here. You just have to pack it strategically. You might have missed this compartment on the outside of the slide. Oh, did we? Yeah. Well, let's go back. Oh, hopefully it's open. It is, yay. Okay, so this one on the outside of the slide has the clip that you know I don't love to hold it up, but it does the trick. And it's, again, it goes up higher, it's light. I mean, every little bit of storage you can get is great, right? So I do like that. Okay, let's go back to the end here. Oh, I wanted to talk about windows too. It looks like all of the windows are sliders on this unit, so I'm happy with that. Here is your city water connection, your tank fill, your fuel fill. Here's the black tank flush, and down here is your sewer hookup with your gray and your black poles. So what that's gonna mean is that this system is not enclosed and heated, but I did do some checking, so come with me over here, and I can show you that it's not an enclosed underbelly. So, which isn't unheard of, but you can see everything going on. And I can see that there are pads on these tanks to heat them, which is great, which is gonna help. But because it's not an enclosed underbelly, some of that heat's just gonna dissipate out into the air as well. So yes, it's helping, but it isn't going to make any difference to the valves for your pulling. Then I also noticed that there's another black valve pull here. So what Corey and I do, and you should too, when we're looking at these systems is we follow the piping. We follow which, where's the black one from the valve to the tank. Of course, in enclosed underbellies, you can't do that. But on something like this, you can. What we can see is that we've got a black pull here and we've got a black pull there, and there's nothing between in the actual plumbing tube. So that's confusing to us. And if any of you know why that is, like you would see that kind of thing if there were an extra tank and so they were pulling from different places, but there is nothing between these two to indicate why you would need two black pulls. I'm not the be all and all know it all. <laughs> so if any of you out there know why that would be, we'd love for you to put it in the comments so that we can all learn. The other thing that we've learned down here, whoo, we're on the highway bit noisy. We've got a uh, receiver hitch here and there are uh, electric stabilizer jacks back here. So that's good too. All right, going up, uh, you do get a ladder so you can climb up onto the roof and you also have a backup camera up there so that you can see what's going on back here. Coming around to the passenger side, you get a huge electric awning with LED lighting, so you know I love that. Um, and then some more storage base. Another lift up, so you get the clip system. And uh, another nice washable bay lit. I like those. And here is an electric outlet. And this one is your propane fill. So that's nice and easy, right? And there's another one here. It does seem to have a lot of storage. So yeah, see another big space. You really can fit a lot of stuff in here if you strategically pack all of these. Alrighty. Now there's no steps. It's just that there, the entrance is low enough. So when you're thinking about that, you also want to think about where you're driving and what you're pulling into because this means that it's a bit lower, but that's a class C, that's how they are. You've got a handrail, you have a window in the door, and there you go. So it's, um, I don't know, I don't want to call it a friction door because it's not going to stay in any other position. It's one position, it's not gonna go further than this back and hit on anything, so it doesn't need a bumper or a latch, but it's also not going to go in any other position. 
And you hear those trucks. <laughs> you do get a screen door. I can get that open. Works like that. These doors do seem a little bit narrow. Just a little different, I guess, but nothing wrong with that. It still works just fine. All right, let's go in and check out the 2022 27R. Come on. So on the inside here, as you're coming in, you've got your light switches, your awning, um, your step light, your battery disconnect, and your switches for the um, stabilizer jacks there at the back. You also get ducting for the heating system. Let me shut this door. And then moving up here is where all the other buttons are for things like uh, your tank heaters and your water pump and all those kinds of things. So, in the chateau, you are getting mostly lighter decor, but also mostly on the beige tones, creamy and beige. Just, it's, it's not bad. It's not dark wood, so I think that they're meeting uh, customers' ideas of what they want. This is a big cabinet up here, and I cannot reach this very well. And I noticed that there doesn't seem to be any system that covers up the steps so that I could get closer. Into the dinette, coming down, there is a drawer under the seat, which is quite deep and long, and I love that. It's not as big as the door implies, but it is a nice drawer and it is on the roller glide, so I like that. Um, these seats have seat belts in them for passengers on both sides. And this side also has the setup uh, for a child seat hookup in it. And if we move up, I'll show you in here. These are massive doors, hey? Big opening, goes all the way through. It's on the struts, it's not gonna bang me. Okay, I can't really get it down unless I stand on the seat. But you've got speakers, you've got LED lighting, uh, table seats. I think I'd like it to be a little bigger this way, but that's okay. Just suits different people different ways. You've got uh, cup holders here and you've got a, a one of those chargers that I'm just going to put this blind down for you guys to see better. It's a nice pleated blind and I don't mind the um, box around it. Anyway, back to the charger. This is the kind of charger that you can just set your phone on and it just charges it up. So that's kind of cool too. There is electrical underneath and there's another drawer on this side. I really like drawers underneath because they're just so much easier to access and I love them when they're on roller glides. We'll get to the cab in a little bit, <laughs> but I do want to talk about the bunk area, right? So the, the mattress folds down into this space. So when you are not using the bunk, you can walk inside to the cab way easy. Then when you want to use that, you just flip it down. It also has this little netting, which I learned from another uh, review is to keep the kids in. <laughs> We thought it was for luggage or something. You can use it for whichever one you like. You do get quite a big TV up there, windows. Um, while we're up there, there's also a uh, vent and fan, AC ducting, LED lighting, all good. Now remember when we were outside, it had that big full wall slide. So this is where it starts. So you're getting a couch which is comfortable um you know what i just want to check so i know this is going to make into a bed let me just see oh yeah so it's a jackknife type bed but what i wanted to know and you can see in here is there are actual seat belts in here as well so you could be seating people in the couch area while you're in transit too so that's how that works and oh i might as well show you this while it's down uh, back here, you've got all this storage, cup holders, and I'll pull this down too, just so you can see better. You get the uh, pop-up electric, so that's cool. Speakers, more 
storage space, smaller doors, still on struts, but quite deep back there. All right, let's see if I can put this back up. Maybe I gotta go this way first. There we go. You just gotta be able to pull the back up at the same time as you push the front. There we go. Okay, you do get great big windows in here, so I love that. Now let's go check out the kitchen area. I would say, personally, if there was an area lacking, this would be it for me. Just because the there's really very little countertop space. So you do get the flip up, you know, I love that. Uh, there's a little bit of countertop back here, which is nice. Do love the backsplash that's there. Up here is your convection microwave. So it's pretty small, somewhat high, but it's convection. Range hood, Furion, nice. Glass top, three burner propane, love that. And you get a small oven. So I guess that's the other thing. Do you need an oven and a convection oven? They're both kind of small, so why not? Nice pots and pans drawer, we love that. Uh, up here is a, quite a nice cabinet goes quite deep and this is an adjustable shelf so that's good now it's very hard to reach because it's way back here and the counters way out here so you're gonna need a stool of some sort uh, we've got more switches here we've got electric we've got LED and we got more cupboard here oh oh okay so this has a, a pull out which is perfect for the space because it is kind of tucked back there but at least you could pull this out and that's easy access and then this one on this side is more like a wine rack how cool is that right okay countertops are a thermal foil there's no um, seal or anything there you've got a nice tap with a sprayer so I do like that the uh, sink covers they're not, they're just sink covers. There's no cutting board or anything. So honestly, I'd have to get something else. Nice single undermount sink. Uh, it's deep, it's big, but again, draining issues and all that would come into play. But it's quite nice. It's got some under cabinet lighting. Uh, what I love about this is that it's a great place for your garbage. Garbage can sometimes be a challenge as to where am I going to put that? So I like that. Then over here, underneath the flip up, there's more electrical. So that's good. And this is the type of flip up that once the slide is out, you could leave this up. It's not in the way. And below it are two nice drawers on roller gliders. So I like all that. Over to this side, you get a big fridge. I'm going to say this is a, an eight cubic foot and it is a propane electric, lots of space, good height. So I like that. And above it is a big cupboard that I have no idea what you would do with, but storage is storage, right? Next here. Now I want to show you as you move back, there's quite a step up. It's not a huge step up, but, but it's wide and it is lit and you need to be cautious of it. But you get this, a nice pantry. So at the top, you're getting adjustable shelves and at the bottom, you're getting pullouts. I love that. Very nice. Then let's talk bedroom because here is basically where the bedroom area would start. So you've got some cupboard space here, quite deep. Again, adjustable shelves. There's heat ducting below, all good. And then you're at the mattress. I got to get the dimensions of this mattress for you because it seems like it's an RV size mattress, um, not a, a standard queen. 
I think it's probably the width of a queen, but I don't think it's the length of a queen. So we'll figure that out. Um, underneath it, okay, so let's talk about this mattress. So it folds up like that because right here is the base of the slide. This is going to stay in position all the time. This base is going to come in to here, leaving the mattress folded up for uh, when you're in transit. And of course, then you can't get underneath that. So coming back here, let me put this mattress down and I'll show you some more. Now, there is, oh, so you can go this far before you have to take a step up but there's, for me, plenty of room to step up. There is USB and a very slight little, maybe you could put a book in there. Uh, then you get all this storage, which is basically the same as out there. Struts, smaller openings this way, but tons of storage that way. And nice windows, good ventilation. And over here is quite a good um, opening for books, water, phone and you get electric 12 volt and usb here uh, and then we move into the closet area which has three doors it's all mirrored there's a nice big rod it's very spacious so i like all that and underneath each of these doors is a drawer so you get three more drawers so i'm liking that and over to this side is where your uh, hookups and electricity and things are for a TV. So that's all good, right? And then there's a privacy curtain that just wraps around the bed and you can still get into the bathroom. So come along. And here we are into the bathroom. So we've shown you some other ones recently where similar floor plans, but they were kind of tighter and you couldn't get in here as well. So I'm really liking the ease and space in here. That's how big the shower is. You got a little skylight. You've got the standard plastic one piece surround, standard average taps. You've got a base. These are all click together no real caulking um, the base seems pretty sturdy the shower curtain door is this rubbery stuff and it's on a radius so it is going that way i don't have a problem with any of that you'll just want to make sure that this rubbery stuff gets dried off up here whoo, be careful of that or maybe put one of those little rubber things you know that you put to keep doors from banging but there's some storage for you and that's decent coming out of the shower is the toilet which is up on this base but it doesn't seem too high it is a porcelain and it is a foot flush so that means you gotta get your foot crammed way up there that seems just a little bit odd countertop is the same as in the kitchen so it's the thermal foil it's a bit of a banjo style so you do get a little extra uh, space there so i like that small stainless well i don't think it's stainless stainless like sink average taps there is electrical there and here's the storage which also isn't bad then moving up you get a decent mirror at a good height and more storage in there there's switches there is a hook you've got ac venting you've got a fan how do i turn that fan on oh i bet you it's in one of these switches so we can handle all that there is uh, more hanging devices here on the door so i like that so now I guess we better talk about the cracker barrel factor hey because this is a big slide so i guess what we know is when we fold up this bed and bring this in nobody's sleeping on there 
so that's not the greatest but you have other options in here now for the rest of the slide space remember it's all one piece and it's coming in this is going to come into right about here ish so you'll still have access to the fridge and the pantry and remember the bed isn't moving a whole bunch so you're still going to be able to get into the bathroom and you will be able to access all of the kitchen and because it slopes in like this you're going to be able to walk right in the door and get into this kitchen space you'll be able to use all of this it's going to be tight but they are when you pull the slides in you'll be able to get into the the uh, dinette you'll be able to make this down to a bed i i would wonder if there's enough room to actually pull that out into a bed but there very well could be plus you've still got that bunk so even though that bed back there isn't usable you do have a, a whole lot of other sleeping area plus you can access everything you need and use it all so i think that works pretty good now i want to show you the cab so let's turn around and come check it out the driver's seat seems quite comfy i love this sort of style because it seems very truck like and I think I could drive it as long as I didn't forget what was behind me <laughs> but you know it's like driving a pickup you've got everything you need you got those big mirrors you've got a good windshield cup holders your nav system everything there um, let me just try getting into this passenger seat because sometimes it's tight for the legs so when I sit down it is it's a little scrunchy there with the legs the other thing that I find a problem in this type of rig is this big center console comes over so far that my, when I'm sitting in the middle of the seat, my legs have to be kind of cocked that way. I don't love that. And I don't, there's not a lot of room for uh, movement of these seats because they're right up against things. So that would be something that's not the best for me for long travel days to have my legs jammed up against that so just a thought plus it's kind of cool to have doors here that you can just pop in and out of without having to go through all that but you can fit a bunch of extra people in here for sleeping and seat belts so that's great now the other thing i want to show you between the house and the cab there is a small step uh, so you don't want to trip on that and then let's talk about the flooring because this is all vinyl there is no carpet so yay I'm in love with that uh, and then let's talk about the ceiling you're getting AC ducting so you've got this vent here you have a vent uh, in the kitchen area in the bedroom area and in the bathroom area plus you've got AC and LED so I think there's going to be lots of ventilation in here plus these big windows that you can open i'm liking all of that now we got to talk about the numbers now for the numbers on the 2022 chateau 27r uh, i found that the gross vehicle weight rating is 14,500 pounds and then i went looking for the cargo carrying capacity on the actual sticker on the rig and found that it has a 1915 pound cargo carrying capacity but out of that 382 pounds would be a full tank of water so that depends on you and how you want to travel but because this is a class c you also have to take out the occupants so you and your passengers weight also has to come out of that 1915 pounds so i just want you to think about all of that you've got that much space plus you've got the 382 that you got to take off for water plus you then you can start putting your stuff in here <laughs> okay so think that through and then uh let me see what else i can tell you this has an exterior length of 29 feet 1 inches an exterior height with the ac of 11 feet an exterior width without the mirrors of 99 inches because you can probably fold them in but be cautious when they're out because it'll be more than 99 inches the interior height 84 inches the awning size was 20 feet 
The fresh water is at 40 gallons. The black tank is at 34 gallons and the gray tank is at 37 gallons. Uh, your furnace is at 30,000 BTUs. Uh, oh, they give us the exterior storage space at 55.5 cubic feet. It did seem like there's a fair amount out there. That hitch at the back uh, will tow 8,000 pounds. So that's all great. And then there were a couple more things. Oh, I wanted to talk about the bed size. So they're calling it a king. So I guess that would be the width because it's certainly not a king in length. The TV in the bedroom came in at 32 inches and the TV up in the bunk, I think was about 39 inches. And then there's that all important number, which I, they've taped it down over here. So hang tough. It came in at 146,900 Canadian dollars. So make sure you use the currency converter to figure that out for you. Um, and then let us know if this is the one for you. Because if it is, that's pretty cool. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. If you're an owner and you have anything you want to share with us, we really do want to hear about that because your experiences um, really add a lot to all of us and our learning about these RVs. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. If we've provided you with any value at all, feel free. Hit the link in the description, buy us a coffee. Check out one of these links at the end here that'll take you to the construction video or you can come along on an adventure because we love having you along for those. It's very nice that you spend your time with us and we truly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.